at the main stage. Not a surprise that Louie brought some Hasbro toys with him. I think he's got a whole room probably full of that stuff at his mom's house. It wouldn't surprise me. So I love that he made Carter hold it for like a while like he was like the model. <laughs> that was nice. So up next we have the probably most popular thread on ZBrush Central. His work is amazing. I know many of you know him out there, so please continue bringing the questions through the Twitter. We're going to try and ask what we can, and obviously we'll be taking questions here. So without further ado, uh, Martin Verhoeven. Thank you. Uh, I'm Martin Verhoeven. I'm a CG sculptor, I'm a freelance artist, uh, and I would like to start the demo by uh, showing off some work I created over the past years, and also give a little bit of explanation how the images were created, so if you have any questions, please ask. Uh, my work is divided in two pieces. Uh, I would call one piece uh, creature art and the other one observation sculpting, because I think uh, you should try the whole spectrum uh, when you're designing everything. Uh, this is a piece I did a couple of years ago. It was a uh, build of uh, a base mesh I had. Um, and it was also rendered in, uh, in ZBrush and uh, composed in Photoshop. The next one, this, was one, uh, this one was uh, rendered in KeyShot a couple of years ago. This one is also in KeyShot. It was built up with uh, Z-spheres and uh, then dynameshed and the wings were done in uh, shadow box because I often got the question how did you do the wings so this one also Photoshop and ZBrush this one was done for uh, the beta uh, and it was the first time I, uh, I tried out dynamesh and uh, yeah it worked so <laughs> um, I did a series of busts uh, a couple of years ago, and I'm thinking of uh, making some 3D prints of it. But uh, I also gonna pick up again on uh, on this team because uh, there are several works that uh, that has that certain style of in of influence. So this one also created with uh, Z spheres, then uh, remeshed and built from scratch in ZBrush. This one also. Yeah, if I'm going too fast or something, yell out, please. Uh, I have many influences in my work, especially uh, the work of H.R. Giger, uh, as you can see, I, I think. And also the stuff that uh, the uh, visual effects studios did in the, in the 80s. This one uh, was built of the same base mesh than uh, the first devil, but uh, this one also rendered in Keyshot. The same. This one uh, was an experiment to get uh, a clay texture in, in Keyshot, but uh, yeah, with the new version coming of ZBrush, I don't have to search further. <laughs> oh, sorry. This one is also one of the designs of the bust series, so. Uh, yeah, I got a warm for uh, some uh, artistic nudity, so sorry. <laughs> this one is from the same series. This one I did it last year for a competition that I didn't win, so. This is created also from Z-Spheres uh, and rendered in ZBrush for a tutorial that I did for uh, 3D Creative. The only uh, subject they give was uh, make an alien. So. Then uh, I would like to skip to uh, observation sculpting. It's Caveman I did, and it was based on, uh, on studying the, the skeleton of a Neanderthal. And I tried to figure where all the muscles went, and uh, I built everything up, so. A study on an ape, because uh, I really love to sculpt apes. 
This one also. Uh, I wanted to create a wolf because I didn't add a wolf in my portfolio, and it's always great to practice uh, fur. And the fur was created with uh, the clay, the clay br brushes and uh, nothing fancy. And also the snake hook, but that's something I'm going to explain. So I didn't have any skulls. <laughs> uh, this is a portrait I did because uh, I found that the, my portraits weren't good enough, so I studied <laughs> another one. They were done, f uh, I search up a couple of pictures. Most of the times I need four or five pictures of, of, of a face and I can recreate or try to recreate the actor or the person I'm trying to build. And I always keep practicing, practicing, and, and trying to develop new techniques to, to apply to skin detailing and everything. So I'm going to skip through this pretty fast. This was a practice on uh, muscles, so and anatomy, of course. And the most important thing for me when I sculpt is use reference. Keep using reference and keep looking at photos and don't try to, to let your mind uh, fill the blanks because you always go wrong that way. This was also created, started from a Z-sphere and then building the horse and also uh, the woman sitting on top. And also another study on anatomy. So skin detailing. I want to explain a little bit about skin detailing or how I work. And uh, I've chosen this piece uh, because I can demo wrinkles, big pores, fat pockets, and things that were used uh, in this case. So uh, small breakdown on how the total uh, thing was built up. So the hair was sculpted with a standard brush. Uh, it was extracted as a, a subtool. So first I masked off a piece, extracted it, and then I uh, dynameshed it, and I started sculpting it with a standard brush, uh, the standard Alpha uh, 95 with the uh, lazy brush turned on. And uh, I also used a lot of move topological to get everything in the right position where I want it to be. And for the small details, on the side of the, the hairs, they were pulled up uh, with uh, the snake hook. It's a tool that's very easy. Uh, the skin detailing was done uh, using an Alpha 38 standard brush and also displaying a couple of uh, custom alphas I created. And I also used the Alpha 85 and direct rectangle all the details into the face. Uh, this is just to show how I build up the global forms. I use the basic brushes, nothing fancy, just clay buildup and clay tubes, and a lot of move topological because I like to use uh, a clean base mesh uh, that I can skip through the di uh, different subdivisions and uh, make easy adjustments over the model, or when I want to repose it, I don't have to uh, use the remesher again. It's a bit lazy. Uh, the, uh, the stubbles were created uh, with fiber mesh. It's a very standard setting, just mask part off and uh, I put it in. And I have gotten some questions in the past how the, the stitching or um, the, the fabric was done and was just with a uh, noisemaker and an alpha I found on Zebra Central and I unwrapped the base mesh and I applied the alpha with noise mesh. Wrapped the base mesh and I applied the alpha with noise mesh. 
So over to skin detailing. So this is actually the model, but uh, I wiped out all the details. And I put the eyes in. Let's see. I choose a standard brush. Now for 38. Adjust my draw size. I use Z intensity of 30 now. I just start pulling in all the little details. I'm trying to find the flow, how the eyelids work and how they are based in the eye socket. So Little strokes, big strokes. Also smooth them out a bit. It's nothing really fancy, just you digging into the sculpt, so. And the easy thing I do at home is I uh, use a dual screen and uh, on the other screen I put up some reference for the thing I'm sculpting, so. Yeah, this is really fun to look at, I know. <laughs> any questions, Paul? Any, any questions on the floor? Oh, here we go, right in the okay. front. Right here, right in the front. So uh, I noticed that you're working with uh, symmetry off right now. Uh, do you always immediately start the face with no symmetry at all once you have your, your base? No. Down? No, most of the times I, I keep symmetry on because uh, yeah, it's easier to work and you don't have to do the double of the work. But uh, in this case, I used the head uh, that was in this stage and it already was posed. So now I'm just going to sculpt maybe two sides or one side of the head, depending on the time, just to show you. Thank you. But it's very important that even when you work with symmetry on, that at some time you break it all up and also in the small details and the wrinkles because your eyes will uh, directly pick up if it's all symmetrical and it doesn't feel natural that way so Now I'm trying to sharpen these edges a bit. And I will drag in some pores. Uh, use these. Turn uh, the Z intensity down to 10 or 15 or something like that. Let's see. Martin, way in the back. I have a question for you, way back here. Yeah? Hey, are you using any layers? He wants to know if you're using any layers. No. Uh, I've used layers in the past, but uh, I don't use them very often, so. It's something I should use more, because when uh, there will be adjustments or something, when you're working for somebody, it's easier to correct them, of course. Front row question. Yeah. 
At this point in the sculpture, are you finished with the secondary um, detail and are you just working on tertiary at this point? Uh, yes and no, but I skip through uh, different subdivisions when I'm working on a piece. So when I have most of the details, whoa. Uh, most of the details on the figure, uh, and I want to adjust uh, bigger parts, I just keep one subdivision down and most, most of the detail will, will be kept going up again. So. Fran's asking on Twitter, do you prefer working with subdivisions or just Dynamesh? Um, depends on the creature I'm creating because um, Dynamesh is great for sketching, but uh, when I want to keep uh, more control over my figure, uh, I stick to, uh, to base mesh uh, to have a lot of subdivisions so I can go back and forth. You got a Martin, you are awesome. Just saying, from Mako on Twitter. Just giving <laughs> a shout out to you. And who's saying that? No, nope. Mako did. But I was <laughs> going to say it too. Okay. We all going to say it together. Watch, watch, Martin. Awesome. See that? See how that happened? Th thank you. <laughs> and that was from above, you know, sitting here in the front, they saw it. <laughs> Brought a tear to my eye. So now I'm trying to figure out how the pores go because now I'm putting in the longer ones. Let's see, let's skip from. S oh. I'm using some. Got another question here for you on the floor. Okay. Um, I, I saw some of the piece uh, that you did online on the, you know, the famous actors and the likeness was, was like spot on, it was so great. Yeah. I was just wondering your workflow, do you just set the reference of the actor on the side while you sculpt or do you, do you post it at like an image plane at some point to start it off? Um, until now I always put it on the, on the right screen okay. so I can just look at it as a reference. But uh, it would be easier if I use see-through. That's something I now coming. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it, the other thing is I noticed that you know even with you know with image plane mm -hmm. with a face straight on, there is lens distortion that you know you probably download inner you know image from the internet for reference. You're like even with that completely matching on, it seems to be always off like to just to yeah. get that perfect likeness it seems but, to but the most important thing when you when you try to sculpt something and and you know it's a person in 3d that you have enough reference so you can skip uh, between the, the different sides when you're sculpting so i never load up an image and i look at it for five minutes no i look at it two minutes scroll another few and and that you keep rotating everything when you're working on something because when, when you use uh, see-through or anything else and you load it up in the background and you start adjusting it, and it could be that you're working for two hours or, or, or less, and uh, then you turn the, uh, the, the sculpt that it's totally off. So, and then you gotta rework everything. Try to think so, uh, as much as you can in three dimensions when you're sculpting, like you would do in real clay. Let's see. I also use uh, the pores in uh, in two values, positive and negative, because uh, when you study skin, you'll notice that uh, they don't, that they're not just uh, holes in your face. <laughs> so let's see. And also, depending on the piece uh, where you're working on on the face, the, the pores will be bigger and smaller. But that's just a, a thing of reference, and when you study it, you will notice that. So.
So I'm stitching together different type of alphas because the more different type of alphas or brushes you use, the, the, natu the more natural everything will look at the end. So. Question right up front here for you. Yeah, sure. So at this level, um, do you, you you're getting all the major form in while it's symmetrical, and then yeah. you, I, I, I met, then you have to pose it and then put all the skin detail on. Right? You couldn't put the skin detail on and then pose it, right? You could put the skin detail on it and then pose it, but uh, there will be more uh, deformation in the, in all the detail you have sculpted. So. All the way in the back. <laughs> Question for you. Yeah. When you're choosing your sculptures, I notice that you don't have the default red madcap. Is there a particular madcap that you like to use uh, when you're s sculpting particular subject matters, be it human flesh, or if you're trying to do something mechanical? Uh, I just uh, uploaded all the madcaps I have at home, so <laughs> I skipped between all of them. Is there a particular one you like to use for a certain scenario? I mean, uh, I like to use the, the clay materials the most. I prefer them uh, above the, the, the gray materials because uh, I think it gives a more natural feel how the, the light bounces on the matcap. I for me as an artist, so it will be different for everyone. Thank you. This is amazing work. And also, when the details are too strong, I just can blur them out a bit, so. And for the nose, I will use something different. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, probably I will go up one subdivision in the second stage for even finer details, so. Just trying to drag everything in. Here's a question from uh, Twitter from Tan. Yeah. How much do you use alpha compared to hand sculpting when detailing a model? Um, when I'm at this stage, um, I will use more alphas, but uh, when I'm going to create some extra fat pockets and everything uh, around the eyes, I will skip back to, uh, again, the standard brush with, uh, with standard stroke and an alpha 38 or 39 or go to a damn standard just to pinch in the fine lines. Okay, now I'm skipping to spray stroke and I'll use the alpha 58 and this is a great alpha to create these long wrinkles, let's see, it's okay. Yes, you can also feel how everything is slowly getting together. And I will break up the side of the face a bit. With the alpha eighty five, so 
let's turn the intensity down a bit. Spray is on. And use negative value. So. Here's a question from Lily3D on the Twitter. Okay. Martin, your work is great. What made you start using ZBrush and what type of style do you tend to like and what, make, what inspires you? Um, what inspired me to start with ZBrush uh, is one image. It's an image I saw that was done by Rick Baker. And I saw it on a forum and I was like, uh, a makeup artist did that in 3D and how was it done and I just started googling and, and dropped into the forums and started searching and I was like, whoa, this is amazing because before I knew box modeling and I did a, a bit of it but it didn't feel natural or it didn't feel like drawing and, and that's actually the, the biggest reason how I got into ZBrush and the things that inspire me the most are um, the work of other artists and uh, also the classical work uh, that has done, been done in, uh, in the Renaissance by uh, the great masters, and that's something that always always comes back to me. So, Excellent. let's see. So, I'm trying to break up the skin a bit because when it's all smooth and flat I don't have enough idea how the flow of the shapes are going so the light breaks a bit different on the total of the model question here on the floor yeah sure uh, when you're doing a female portrait, do you approach it the same way uh, when you're doing the skin texture or because uh, for a female it's more, you have to make it more beautiful and like less pores and stuff. So how do you, do you treat it the same way or? For a female I would tone it down a bit because the skin always looks uh, softer. Uh, but in reality I don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's makeup that covers everything, so. And I tend to use a noise maker uh, to get an overall softer feel, and then I'll punch in some extra details that need to, uh, need to be focused, so. Here's another question from Twitter. Yeah. Franz asks, what is your favorite field for sculpting? Concept, film, games? And how much do you rely on topology when you're doing your sculpting? Again, sorry? How much do you rely on topology? How important is it for your sculpts? And what, what is your favorite field for sculpting? Concept, film, games, toys, collectibles? Uh, I've done work for toys and it was fun to do. Uh, also did a few pieces for concept art. Uh, but I try to do as many different uh, things in the spectrum just to keep fresh and everything. And, and also to, to learn uh, new techniques every time because uh, when you do hard surface, it's totally different than this. And uh, I just like to get better <laughs> by studying, so. Okay. Let's go back to the eye. I skip over the model all the time, so now I'm going back to the eye area. Turn the intensity up a bit. I'm digging real deep to get all those small wrinkles in there.
with just gentle and long strokes. So. I will sharpen uh, I will sharpen the edge of the eye a bit the eyelid so with the edge polish brush just turn it out smoothing it out Come on. also for the top part just to get a nice straight edge Like this. Okay. And using the standard brush again with spray strokes and semi alpha alpha eighty five. So here's a question from Eric Sala on Twitter. Mm -hmm. For your creature skin, you have a lot of form breaks and recesses. What brushes are you using to achieve that? Uh, st all standard brushes. Just use uh, the standard brush, clay brush, clay build up. Um, let's see what we have. <laughs> and clay tubes, of course. Yeah. And a lot of uh, move topological brush. Because uh, you can punch on. Uh, big details and small details, and it's a brush that's often forgotten, I feel, by artists. Or they don't mention it. Let's see. Trying to skip up on subdivision. Okay. And as you see, because I'm now skipping up one subdivision, a whole lot of the pores are just smoothed out, and now I can go back in and try to uh, make again some uh, sharper shapes. Again, the Alpha 38, I will use 39 now. Okay. Oh, spray stroke still on. And just work around everything real slow. Take your time. Turning up the intensity a bit. Okay, that's better. And try to follow the muscle flow and how the skin is draped uh, over the muscles and over the skull. So let's see. Punching in some more small details. Here's a question from the floor for you. Yeah, sure. Is there a reason why you sometimes use the freehand stroke or the dotted stroke for just normal wrinkles or lines? Um, not really. I just uh, choose a freehand stroke and I adjust the stroke because uh, I put uh, the lazy step to zero and in modifiers, I pull uh, roll distance up to 10, and then I get long, nice strokes when I'm working on a piece. But uh, I found out that was, for me, the, the easiest way to sculpt um, in the program. OK? OK. So DJ would like to know from uh, Twitter, did yeah. you study uh, animal anatomy? And if so, any recommendations? Uh, no. Good? I didn't study any animal anatomy. It's all uh, 
It's all just looking up reference and trying to analyze how uh, an animal is created or um, how the construction is inside of the creature and how the muscles go everywhere. So, Pure talent, that's the answer. <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of good books out there. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually a really good one that was done uh, in about, let's say, 1892 by two veterinarians and an illustrator. Mm -hmm. So really, really, really good. It's like 10 bucks on Amazon, by the way. Um, it's really detailed. They're all drill illustration drawings. I'll have to see if I can find it. And again, it's a really good book, actually. I'm coming. Yeah, and the most important thing for me when I'm studying uh, things, uh, in my portfolio I have a lot of work, but I'm not afraid to throw away work. So it could be that, that I'm working on a piece for two weeks in my spare time, and when I'm not happy about it, I won't save it on my hard drive, I just toss it away, start again. And next time you will create it, it will be better. And you already have no, the knowledge in your head, so keep, whoa. <laughs> Here's a question Skin for the detailing. floor. Yeah. Here's a question for the floor for you. Okay. Um, for uh, before you start uh, sculpting any uh, like a particular like a, especially you know actors who are famous people recognize. Um, do you like a prior to starting? Do you do a lot of like a study of the face like form to uh, to like analyze the likeness? If you do, do you have any tips to like how to like achieve some like important landmarks to yeah. achieve that likeness? I, I try to look at the overall face, uh, the the overall uh, parts, and then uh, I start to split up the parts when I'm looking at them, just visually and and um, like I said, keep skipping between the different uh, views of faces and then you get a better understanding how the skull is constructed beneath everything and then you will get a, a better result at creating the actor. It's, it's all about uh, looking at everything and learn to look at things. That's also very important. So. Here's another one for you from the floor. Yeah. Uh, while you're working, do you listen to music and what kind of music inspires you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, most of the times I listen to music. Uh, I work at home uh, because I'm a freelance artist. And the first thing I do when I get <laughs> at my desk, I put up some headphones and uh, I listen to uh, a lot of classical music and uh, also a lot of uh, metal and uh, old, school, uh, old school metal Black Sabbath uh, and rock like Led Zeppelin and, and all those bands, so. And when, uh, when the pressure's on, I just put on some dubstep and uh, I just work brainless. So I keep pumping. <laughs> oh. By the way, the, uh, book I was talking about for the animal anatomy that I found very, very helpful was, it's called an Atlas of Animal Anatomy. Okay. And the illustrator was Dietrich, which his last name is spelled D-I-T-T-R-I-C-H. It's an awesome book. Actually, I think the University of Wisconsin has all the drawings, if I remember correct. It's a really, really great book. And it's, in the US, it's 11 bucks brand new on Amazon. If you want it used, it's five bucks. It's worth its money. Okay. Saving file and project. Yeah, okay. Maria on Twitter wanted to know actually what is your process when developing a concept art in ZBrush? Uh, the process when I work in, in ZBrush. For, for concept, if you were going to do concept piece, art piece, what is the process that you usually take when working? 
the process I usually take is I, I try to figure something out in my head, and that can take up a couple of days. And then I just dive into ZBrush and I start, uh, or I use uh, Dynamesh to really fast create something, or ZSphere if I have a better idea that it has to be biped or quadped. So I don't sketch anymore. You don't uh, do any drawings anymore? No, no, nothing. You just, you just go straight into it? Yeah. I threw everything overboard a couple of years ago. It's maybe not such a smart <laughs> solution, but uh, I had to make choices where I can put my time in, so I choose sculpting. I used to draw a lot because uh, I have uh, an education in, in art in, uh, in high school, and also I, uh, I had a degree in uh, animation film. But I didn't like to animate, so uh, I find sculpting a lot more fun. Now I'm using just a clay brush to get some extra details in the lips. Building it all up. Nick Zuccarello is asking on Twitter, okay. how do you handle the business side of being a freelance artist and also, how do you approach posing your work? With a shout out, love your work. Thank you. Um, uh, my work exists uh, from the cash flow I get. <laughs> 30 to 40% is ZBrush related work. And for the rest, I do uh, compositing, visual effects, uh, motion graphics, color grading, editing, Almost everything. Even logos. If anyone wants a logo and they mail me, I'll, I'll make it. I'm a graphical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> like most of freelancers, they take everything on so they can uh, keep their head above water. So. And it's also good to have a great variety in the jobs you do because every time you dive into ZBrush again, it's, it's so much fun to do. And uh, I never get tired of it, so. Come on, Cintiq. So just with the clay brush. Here's a good question since you're dealing with the face from Midu. When you want to uh, make face rig for this character, can you tell us some tips for how you will open his mouth? Uh, how I will open the How would you open his mouth if you wanted to open his mouth right now? This would uh, I will use different poly groups if, uh, if I had already had it in mind if I would open his mouth so I can easily mask off a part and uh, use transpose line. And otherwise, I just use uh, the move topological brush, skip down to a lower subdivision, and pull everything open. You probably already have that plan, though. If the, it sounds like the way you're working, you know if you want the mouth open yeah. or closed. And you, you prepare for that in the beginning. Yeah. It's something I have before in mind, so. It's those two, that two-day process. <laughs> This is your last one. <laughs> you got, you yeah, got another no problem, question. No problem. Here's another here, question here for you, Martin. Uh, I couldn't resist triple um, <laughs> Yeah, like going back to that, that last, last question, have you ever had uh, occasions where, like, you, you, even though you sort of made up your mind of the overall concept, but mm -hmm. at some point, at the, in the when you're making it in the production, you you felt that certain decision you want to change that dramatic like you know a mouth open all of a sudden you didn't need teeth tons any of that but now you do like do you have you ever had that you know issue before where it was more like finalized and you just go from the concept to finish with with no major change? Uh, I will make changes if if they are needed. So I pull everything open. Put in some some extra sub tools, and uh, or I start all, all over again. <laughs> it's that easy. 
It takes up some time, but yeah, like I told, second time will be faster. I don't know what ZBrush is doing. <laughs> Yeah. And blocks? Strange. Probably, probably drop. Do control N. Control N. See if you drop. No. I haven't. <laughs> I broke ZBrush. <laughs> Look what I did. <laughs> Sorry. It might be the wagon driver. Okay. It might be the wagon driver. Is a tablet plug then? Maybe maybe I can skip. There's always things happening in the Twitter feed, Louis Tucci. Here you go. There's always magical, delicious things. What, what's the question? We can talk about this maybe for a minute. Okay. Do you use a base mesh when you... <clears throat> it's awkward to have this in my face these days because I have the... I've moved up to the... Earth. He's such a big deal now. He's got earpieces. It's, it's like the Britney Spears concept. Is like the, the, the whatever. Pablo Garcia wants to know... Do you use a base mesh when you do portraits? Uh, yeah. Is that what you always start with? Yeah, I use a general mesh, and then I start working with everything because... Uh, Someone get a picture of that with Thomas on the back of Martin Verhoeven. The, can we get a redo? Can we get that on Twitter right now? How do you fix the driver? Like this. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. We care about our artists. <laughs> Okay, back to the lips. So, I will sculpt in. Let's see. Turn the Z intensity down a bit. And drag in some lines. Trying to make everything like it's uh, a bit puffy, inflated, so you feel the tension around the lips. Blur it down a bit. Okay. okay. Drawing some more wrinkles. So yeah, I think I will do only uh, half the face for the demo. So.
And blur them all out a bit. Okay. Now skipping back to the nose with a drag rectangular. And I use some finer pores. So I use these. Yes, the intensity is okay. And I use them in a negative and a positive value. Brandy would like to know how long on average do you spend on your models from start to finish? Uh, I tried to limit the face uh, down in two and a half day likeness. Uh, Is that eight hours a day or? Yeah, something like that. I tried to, to cramp everything in that time span. And uh, when I do a full body, it can take up to four days, four or five days. And then most of the times I'm sick of working on that piece, so I... <laughs> move on to the next yeah, inspiration. Yeah, move on to the next piece. If they have the inspiration for it, so... Now blurring it all out. Using the clay brush to make the nose a little bit nose hole deeper. Just so you know, you got ten minutes left. Ten minutes. Okay, okay. Just so you know. I can show the final result. So. Okay. Skipping up again. And I also use the standard brush with the spray stroke and the Alpha 40 just to get little zits and pimples and, and let's see, okay. See intensity is fine, draw size can be bigger. Smooth them all out. And also use the negative value just to break up the skin surface a bit more. So Mako would like to know on Twitter, how much time a day do you spend doing practices? Like, do you do any sculpts that's just practicing, hey, I want to sculpt a bunch of ears? Or you're always just creating a full piece? Uh, most of the time I'm creating a full piece. So you're never doing any little practice studies at all? No. I've tried to do that in the past, but uh, I get bored of it. So <laughs> I like to practice the whole face because it's, it's uh, a, a, a bigger challenge to do. Again, pure talent comes into play. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it has to be a challenge. <laughs> And just randomly putting in the extra details. And I will drag in some more pores, longer pores on the cheeks because it results stretch out a bit. It's easy intensity. And by putting alpha on alpha on alpha, uh, when, you, when you're sculpting on, on a face, the whole thing will look just more natural than just using one alpha and spray stroke and going over all the pieces at once. So. Ronald wants to know on Twitter, how do you know when you're done? Like, when do you consider, I'm done, I'm moving on to the next piece? Uh, <laughs> when I'm tired of <laughs> <laughs> There seems to be a recurring theme here. <laughs> <laughs> I love to work on, 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 on the pieces that I do, but sometimes you just have to get, uh, pull the plug. Do you find that when you're working on a piece, you get inspiration for another piece, and you're like, okay, I'm done with that because I want to go work on that other piece now that you got inspired from? Uh, no. The, the 
<laughs> no, the thing, uh, I often have to recharge my, my batteries as, as uh, creatively. And sometimes I just put ZBrush away for two, three time, uh, days. And, and then I can jump in and create something new. Um, but, um, yeah. Just <laughs> don't know what to say, sorry. <laughs> and now we'll drag in some long pores in the neck area, in the positive value. most important thing that I can say when you do something like this is just you know, stu study the material. But uh, try to do it on reference because when you get close to people, they always look strange, so. Okay, now we'll do some extra fat pockets. So I use the free hands. Gareth wanted to know where you got your skin port or alphas from? Did you uh, make this? I created this. In so Photoshop? What? In Photoshop or? Yeah, Photoshop. Yeah, I, I will sh Wait, I can show them re really fast. Uh, presentations of the skins. Oh, damn, sorry. So I've created them. Presentation of a skin. So these are the skins I created. I got a lot of inspiration uh, from existing alphas, from other artists, but I like to make my own stuff. So I recreate things I see and things I know that work. Uh, just to get a uh, more different view than, than uh, the general things that uh, are available on Zebra Central. So, just to make it my own. These were all really fast painted in, uh, in Photoshop. So. I did it again. Oh. Okay. So for the extra fat pockets, I go to the brush settings, depth, and I pull gravity all the way up. And then you will draw a line, but uh, the, the gravity on the line will drop down like uh, in the shape of a drop, so you can feel the mass in, uh, in the volume that you're sculpting. Hundred is too much. Let's put it down a bit. Okay. Yeah, this is better. So Z intensity down. Draw size. Get real close to your model. Start pulling in the shape, so. How much time do I have, Paul? Uh, like two minutes. Okay. Uh, then I will show you <laughs> some finished work using this technique. <laughs> so. Uh, are you usually are you a Mac or Windows user at home? Windows. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
Let's see. This has been done uh, using the same technique, building everything on top of each other and using some, a lot of photos as reference. It's very important, like I said, keep spinning everything around, look at all sides. And it's just for practice, so. This is also one of the... Yeah, it's just for practice. Yeah. <laughs> no big deal, a couple days, I'm done. So the hairs were created in the same way. Uh, using a standard brush with a lazy mouse on and uh, the alpha uh, three dots. Don't know exactly what it is. But this was a great piece to practice uh, the wrinkles and the, and the fat pockets on the neck. Oh. Um. Let's see. And this is uh, a full model, if it will load. Yeah, okay. But as you can see, I don't go into ski detailing as much as on the bust, of course. But I, but I tend to get all the major shapes in the right direction. And uh, for something like this, I will use a uh, noise maker. So. Yeah, and I love anatomy, so. Well, that's about it. For now. Martin Verhoeven, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. So I know you, a lot of you probably want more questions, but if you can let him get to the back room with Louis, we'd appreciate that so he can get going with his interview because we have one more presentation left. Josh Herman from Marvel has been showing some amazing stuff. You don't want to miss that at all. Twitter, we love you. Keep the questions coming. Hashtag ZBrush. Keep the chat going. I've been looking at it. It makes me laugh and chuckle some of the stuff, so keep that coming. It's real fun. And uh, we're still going to be giving away prizes, so uh, don't go anywhere after Josh's uh, presentation as well. So keep tuned in, and uh, in a minute here we'll have Martin on the screen uh, being sitting there in the back with a uh, good old Louis Tucci. By the way, there's still a business card here from Hasbro if you want it. It's Jan's if you want to be a freelancer. <laughs>